Last year, Brandon Lewis showed a different perspective of the drug epidemic in the Mid-Ohio Valley in his award-winning series. He continues his reporting in a new series that focuses on how the epidemic affects children in West Virginia. He joins us in the studio with part one. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services calls it a significant and rapidly growing public health concern. We're talking about infants showing withdrawal symptoms from opioids, and the stats are especially alarming in West Virginia. This is part one of Addiction's Children, a Generation in Jeopardy. <laughs> Javen loves to play with his toys and his mom. Let me have a little <laughs> He's a happy-go-lucky toddler. <laughs> but this is a far cry from when he was born. I saw symptoms in my son that I remember having with that physical and meant, you know, that physical addiction. And it was very painful to see that. Courtney DeFreitas struggled with drug addiction for 26 years. She was still abusing heroin when she became pregnant with Javen. Six weeks into her pregnancy, she started using Subutex to wean her off heroin. Months later, when she gave birth, she says something was wrong with her son. I noticed he was very red. He was very uncomfortable. He wasn't eating properly. He did not, he wasn't settling. Courtney tells us her son was withdrawing from the Subutex she took and had to be weaned off with morphine. Javen showed signs of neonatal abstinence syndrome, or NAS. It's a withdrawal syndrome that occurs after prenatal exposure to drugs or various substances is discontinued at birth. Uh, the babies are frantic. Uh, from the neurologic point of view, they're frantic, very difficult to console, fussy. They may have, they're very tremulous. They may have seizure activity. They don't feed very well. Um, difficulty feeding, they're difficult to, and they have vomiting and diarrhea, loose stools. In 2017, there are roughly 50 cases of NAS per 1,000 live births in West Virginia. The incidence rate in Wood County is 2.9 percent. That led WVU Medicine Camden Clark to create this space to help treat babies going through withdrawal. So we made it so that we have different types of lights here at this sconce. You know, I can really cast a very tranquil feeling around the room. The room is for the hospital's cuddler program. It features soothing colors, mama roos for the babies, and hospital grade gliders for mothers, nurses, and volunteers to sit on while they cuddle these infants in distress, something Parkersburg resident Charlotte Bumgarner has been doing since the program started. And, uh, they go through withdrawal and uh, it's not comfortable for them and they just need extra cuddling and rocking and you know feed them when they want to eat and give them extra attention. Cuddling and rocking babies are examples of non-pharmacological treatment but the infants can also be treated pharmacologically which can include using morphine as to how much it's costing the state of West Virginia to treat these babies. To get the most accurate information and then to link um, these patients um, to the Medicaid charges and actual payments um, is a difficult task. Um, one at which we are very interested in knowing the, the accuracy of that information, but has proven difficult. And as the state and country continue to tackle the opioid problem, Courtney is focusing on raising her son and says she wants to make things right. And I'm hoping that one day when I have to tell him, you know, about the situation that he'll be understanding. And I think if I continue to be in recovery and to be a good mother to him and raise him in the rooms, I think he'll be fine. And Courtney says her son is doing well. He's thriving, smart and independent. Researchers at West Virginia University are trying to help the state gather more information on cases like Javens. The state currently collects real-time data on diagnoses of neonatal abstinence syndrome. Those WVU researchers have found the data reliable and hope to help pinpoint where resources should be directed to reach the mothers and babies who need them the most.